Gideon Cougar basketball is back in action. Gideon Georgia will hand off on the wing right side. Block will send out to Gideon. Big three. Got it! Gideon George for three. Let's get you ready to root on the boys in blue. This is Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Cougar Pregame Live is brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union. Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. And now, here's your host, Jason Shepard. Good evening, BYU basketball fans. Welcome once again into Cougar Pregame Live, presented as always by our good friends at Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Tonight, BYU back on the Marriott Center floor, hosting the Pacific Tigers. BYU snapped its three-game losing streak on Thursday night, beating LMU handily 89 to 61. It was arguably the Cougars' most complete game of the season. BYU shot the ball extremely well, hitting 53% from the field and 50% from three. It was a welcome sight to see the way BYU shot the ball. Spencer Johnson led the Cougars with 14 points, but you also had Rudy Williams and Jackson Robinson, each scoring 13. Foose had 11, and Gideon George finished with 9. It was a complete team effort and one that BYU really needed. Now, the win moves the Cougars' record to 15-10 and 10 overall and 5-5 five and five in the West Coast Conference. The Cougars enter play tonight in 5th place in the WCC standings. The good news is that the team ahead of them in the standings just happens to be tonight's opponent in Pacific. The Tigers are 5 Five and four in conference play and have already lost to the Cougars this year. BYU began West Coast Conference play with a 69-49 blowout win in Stockton in late December, if you remember that game. Pacific has won two games in a row and are uh, a surprisingly good road team in general. The Tigers are 7-3 and three away from Stockton this season, including a conference road record of 3-1. and one. And So sometimes weird things like this happen. They're 5-9 and nine at home but 7-3 and three on the road, things that sometimes don't necessarily make a whole lot of sense. It's kind of what we're seeing with the difference in this team when they play at home in Stockton and when they get on the road and play elsewhere. The Oklahoma State transfer, Keelan Boone, is the team's leading scorer and rebounder. And you can't forget about Luke Abdolovich, who's shooting a scorching 56% from beyond the arc. As a team, Pacific is the 10th is tenth in the nation in three-point percentage at just under 39%. Perimeter defense will be a focus tonight for the Cougar defense. Time now for our pregame player interview. And I was able to speak with freshman guard Dallin Hall. Here's our conversation. Something I noticed when I walked into practice today, I wouldn't know if you guys were coming off a win or a loss. I've come in here after losses. It feels the same as today. You guys are coming off a win. What do you think that says about you guys as a team? I think that says a lot about our character, um, our coaching staff, the way they approach the game is um, kind of bled into the rest of the team, right? Our mind says no matter what, win or loss, it's get better. And so we try and have that same energy in practice. And it's cool to hear that from an outside person, you know, like that they see that. And uh, because we definitely feel that way about our core and we feel like we're a resilient group. Resiliency is something, that's a word that I, I know I've used a lot in talking about you guys. Where do you think that comes from? Is it is it from the coaching staff down? Is it just the, the team in general? Where do you think that starts? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both, like you're saying. It starts in the coaching staff, um, and then it's in our team leaders, those guys who've been here a little while. They really help us younger guys to understand what it means to win at this level um, and what it means to bounce back after a loss. So the veterans in this team and the coaching staff really set that tone. As I mentioned, you guys are coming off a really impressive win, and a lot of people said it's maybe the most complete game you guys have played. Is there anything that felt different? Obviously, you guys shot the ball extremely well for the entire game. What stood out to you about the victory? Uh, I think our toughness from the beginning. We had guys um, like Noah Waterman. He really set the tone by getting on the floor, diving after loose balls, guarding. Um, he was moving like his feet like crazy out there, and so feel like those guys who came in after saw that tone that was set from the beginning and we just kept rolling with that why that game in particular any particular reason why that game was one where the the mindset was exactly where you needed it to be coming out or was it just just happened to be one of those things i think we've been building for a while now you know coming off that saint mary's loss it was tough but we saw like there's a lot of positives we could take one of those being our defense and i thought that really translated with us having those guys back they really brought us extra juice some great shooting and so 
yeah, it felt good to kind of put the puzzle together. Well, and I think it probably also reminds, yeah, you guys had lost three in a row, but it, it reminds everybody watching. It obviously reminds you guys what you guys are capable of when things are, are clicking the way that they were. Yeah, absolutely. It's good to see it finally pay off. It feels like it's been a long time coming, but we can't get complacent now. Just keep building. What is the next thing for you guys? I'm sure it's probably a little bit of everything. You just got to get better, as you mentioned. It's about getting better every day. What does that look like right now? What are you guys focusing on? I think right now it just becomes with staying hungry, like so hungry and desperate. We know we're in a a weird position with the the WCC and everyone's beating up on each other. And so we really got to take advantage at this time to stay hungry and make a push. What has been your impression of this conference? Obviously, it's your first time through. It'll obviously be your last one as well. What have you thought of the West Coast Conference being in it this year? Yeah, I think it's a very skilled conference with a lot of skilled players. Um, You know, going to the Big 12, there's definitely going to be more athleticism. But as far as the WCC, the shooting and the skill is very high. Um, And so that's been a really fun year for me to try and adjust to, to get my skills up, my IQ up. And it's been fun to see the growth of our team as well in this conference. Where do you feel you're at based off of maybe where you wanted to be at this point? Are you ahead of schedule? Where does that stand for you? Uh, I feel like I'm just nearing the schedule. (laughs) Yeah, just getting a little bit better. Um, My body's feeling better, so... It's been fun, and I'm excited to see what these next couple of weeks hold. Obviously, coming off your mission, that's, you're going to go through that. Has that been more difficult than you expected it to be? Yeah, for sure. I feel like uh, I didn't really anticipate it, and kind of the first couple of weeks I didn't notice it, honestly. But as the course of the season's gone on and I've started to gain more and more confidence in my game and my body, I've started to see, you know, it is a process. Um, so I'm happy with the, the progress I've made, the steps I've taken, but I... You know, I can see myself doing it, getting a lot better and helping this team a lot more. Pacific is a team that you guys actually began conference play with this year. You guys got the win by 20. Really impressive victory. What do you remember from that game? I remember it was really fast-paced game, lots of threes. They shoot a lot of threes. Um, and so I remember that we shared the ball well, had a lot of assists. So coming into this game, they're obviously a lot different of a team. They're really rolling right now. Uh, We're a very different team. Defensively, we've gotten a lot better. And so just anticipating a fast-paced game where we got to make sure we're there on shooters. Coming off of a game against LMU, they like to put up a lot of threes. Does it help having played a team like that and now facing another team like that? Is there some similarities from a defensive standpoint that you can attribute to both? Yes, absolutely. Their transition pace um, is very similar to LMU. might be even faster. They've got even more shooters. Uh, They play with five shooters. So I think that was a good game to get us ready mentally because we saw a lot of things that we need to fix against LMU as far as transition defense, and so we need to implement it against Pacific. Every game is important. You guys always say the next one's the most important, but you guys are wrapping up three-game homestand. You head back out on the road. Getting this one's pretty important for you guys to kind of set the tone for what you hope the rest of the month is like, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. Appreciate the time as always. Thanks. Thank you so much. Good stuff from the freshman, Dallin Hall. Appreciate him taking a few minutes after practice yesterday. All right, coming up next, we'll head next door. Our courtside conversation with Mark Durant coming your way next live from the Marriott Center. So get you ready for the Cougars and the Tigers on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's Jason Shepard with more Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. BYU Cougars back at home hosting the Pacific Tigers. Welcome back in to Cougar Pregame Live. It's presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. We are pleased to be joined from the Marriott Center by the great Mark Durant. You know him, you love him, you probably follow him on social media. Good evening, Mark. Jason Shepard, my friend, here we go again. Man, I just always look forward to talking to you, man. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, the, the feeling is mutual, uh, I can assure you that. Uh, also something I think we looked forward to was both you and I had a pretty good feeling about the way the game was going to go the other night before it even started. We both just kind of had this, I think BYU, I think they're going to play pretty well tonight. Well, they made us look pretty smart. There was a lot to like about that win over LMU. What impressed you? Wow, man, that was a great, great game. And, uh, uh, you know, I I think part of the reason uh, why we expected that was because even though BYU lost to St. Mary's and Gonzaga, they they played really well. And, 
you, you know, when you sit on those losses for that long and, you, and you're finally back home and, uh, you know, you just intend to just get it all out. And uh, LMU, I, I think maybe what hurt LMU a little bit was that they had beaten Gonzaga and they were kind of feeling good about themselves and had beaten BYU and maybe thought that they could uh, – I just come in and get a win here, but uh, BYU was ready. They played super physical uh, and rebounded the heck out of the ball and played good defense like you'd expect. But yeah. the real thing that was impressive was how, how good they are offensively. And I've been kind of all season long, I've been saying, well, BYU's not particularly good on offense and they've got to win games by defense and rebounding. And, and I think that's generally true. But the other night they were just fine offensively they were clicking and knocking down threes and it was working and they were confident and uh, it was uh, it was fun to see them you know not just have to rely on the defense and rebounding and have a close game but really every aspect of the game came together for BYU they looked great and it's uh, pretty impressive what this team can do when when they are playing some pretty good offense because it that, that means that they got a complete game and, and they made a really good LMU team look a little bit silly. Uh, and that's a pretty impressive thing to do. Look, when you shoot the ball as well as they did, it's usually going to end in a victory. Not all the time, but more times than not, when you're shooting 53 and 50 from the field and from three, you're going to win a lot of games. Was it just one of those nights? Or did you see something that you think can be replicated moving forward? Was it was it they're playing so well defensively it fueled the offense? What do you make of that? No, I, I think it's both of those. I mean, it was one of those nights, which is fine because sometimes you have off nights, and so you you know you, you deserve to have some nights where you're kind of hitting your shots. But what I I really think BYU is kind of finally figuring out uh, more, more particularly the the two man game. Let's take. Uh, um, you know, Dallin Hall, for instance, um, he and Foos are really getting a nice little, uh, you know, Stockton Malone-esque type feel together. And you'll see Foos come out, set that high screen, and Dallin goes over the top, and and the guard usually goes over the top with him to keep him from shooting a three. So that means Foos's man, the big man, has to kind of hedge. And so basically you've got... Uh, Dallin in front of his man with his, his man on his back, and then you got a big guy uh, it playing almost two on one again with Foos and and Dallin, and and Dallin does a great job of using his body to keep that defender on his on his back or on his hip, and it really creates a problem for the defense because if you don't if you, if you don't guard Dallin, he's going to hit that little floater or go to the basket. And if you guard if you guard Foos, yeah, if you don't guard Foos, then he just Dallin's just going to toss it up there and so they're really getting a good idea of spacing on that two-man game whether it's Rudy whether it's Jackson whether it's Dallin coming off that screen and and having that 15-foot jumper if it's there uh, taking it to the hoop if it's there or dishing to Foos or Atiki if it's there it's been super effective and so that part of their game I think they're really starting to to figure out the right spacing and how to do it the right way and uh, then you know if if you really do that well Jason then the t- other teams are forced to help off the wing to be able to, to help that big guy defender. And, and if you help too much, then, then the option is just kick it to the wing. So then you're getting better looks from three, which are easier to hit. And, and you all of a sudden, you're great shooters. And part of the reason you're shooting well is because you have really open looks in rhythm. And, and so I just think it's a kind of figuring it out a little bit, figuring the offense out a, a little bit. And th- that helps your confidence and get, you gets you better looks. And then you make shots, which helps your confidence. It's yeah. like a big snowball. And, and, and so, I, I mean, I, there's a lot of things I liked. And the, the question is, can you can sustain that and continue it on here for the rest of the season? Look, make no mistake, we'll take a shooting performance like that every game. But with this that's team. Like, that's like you and Ward Ball, man. <laughs> yeah. you, sometimes you get hot in Ward Ball. Look, look out. Look, heat check. I'm on a, I'm on a constant <laughs> heat check, okay? But, look, I, I don't know if, if they even have to do that, though. If the team can avoid the the low of low games and just play consistently good basketball, it doesn't even have to be great. Mark, I think this team can do some things if they just find that that consistency. Not it doesn't have to be just shoot you know for the moon every time. You just can't have those those down games like we've seen. They can have, find that consistency that you were talking about. I really think this team has as something they can show some people this year. I, I agree, and I, and I hope that they get there. I mean, consistency's always been a big issue, but it's it's not like we're, 
you know, you and I, when we talk about this, it's not like we're asking BYU to do something they haven't done or, or already this season. I mean, they, they've had stretches of really good basketball, and now it's just a matter of really being ready every game and come out with that same consistency. So, so you know, I, I think I think that's the key. And it's, it's easier to do that at home, uh, to be honest with you. Yeah. And BYU will have a road trip next week, which – uh, will will obviously be important, but you know it's always easier to, to get that energy and consistency at home. And BYU needs to do better on the road here to finish out the season. And then, you know, what you want to be doing is to have that consistency, to have that confidence, to be playing your best basketball when the conference tournament comes, because that's a big week for BYU. And and uh, I think this is a year where it's a little bit more open for a non Gonzaga to win it uh, than it ever has been. It's not to say it's going to be easier or anything at all for BYU yeah. they've struggled this year but it, it's certainly a possibility and if you're playing your best basketball it's a, it's a real possibility second time around against Pacific the Cougars picked up the win handily uh, to begin conference play in Stockton now that you've got the Tigers back in we know what they like to do from the perimeter I was talking with Dallin Hall I don't know if you heard that that interview in the last segment you know you, you just faced a team in LMU that wants to take a lot of threes now you're facing another one a lot of those defensive principles that you implemented on Thursday, you could sort of translate those into what you want to do against the Tigers tonight. What do you make of a round two of the Cougars versus the Tigers? Yeah, I think you're right. I think that, that Thursday game will help BYU. It's, it's the scouts probably a not not a lot different for Pacific. Um, they're, they're really good three-point shooting team, and they like to shoot the three. Uh, Abdalovich is terrific. Boone had a nice game at Pacific. Uh, but so so what you do is you kind of invert the defense make sure you're playing outside in and really contesting threes you don't want guys to get hot uh and i I think one of the reasons byu had such luck uh at pacific was the fact that they kind of beat pacific at their own game they were able to to make more threes and shoot more threes than pacific did and and when you can take a team and and do better uh, against a team than they they do their their best thing then you got, got a really good chance of winning so I expect BYU to have a, a nice night tonight because uh, they, they've proven that they can really get out and defend that three-point line recently. And and teams are going to, you know, to come in here and win, you know, this specific team, point blank, they're going to have to shoot really well from the three. And if you let them, they'll have a chance. But if you get out and really contest and limit those three-point opportunities, it's probably going to be a tough night for Pacific. All right, Mark, last thing, and you, you sort of touched on this a second ago when you were talking about Gonzaga, that, you know, Gonzaga, while they're still winning and they obviously have a massive matchup tonight against St. Mary's, that, that's going to be a, a you know, yeah. battle of the heavyweights tonight. But look, a state of the conference, now that we're a little more than halfway through the conference, what do you make of this year's WCC? What, what are you surprised about? Is this about what you thought? What's your, what's your overall thought on the conference? I think it's a really interesting conference this year. Uh, you know, Gonzaga and St. Mary's separate themselves a bit, but and I'm in no way comparing the West Coast Conference to the Big 12. Now, don't get me wrong, but I've just been following the Big 12 a little bit more closely. And, and Why is those, that, those Mark? Teams, those, <laughs> those teams just kind of beat each other up, you know. You, you, different teams winning every night, but they're all so good that it doesn't matter for them. They're all going to the tournament anyway, but the point is that I think there's a lot of teams that are very similar in this conference, whether it's Pacific, LMU, Santa Clara, uh, San Francisco, BYU. I I mean, any team could win on any given night, and it's kind of interesting to see how these teams play and perform. And, and, uh, you know, it's just, I mean, say what you want about the conference, but I I think it's one of the best years the conference has had, and it's kind of fun to kind of go through it one more time and see these teams and and see that, See that they're playing good basketball. I think this, there's good basketball in this conference. All right, I lied. I have one other question. It's not <laughs> basketball related, though, and I've been meaning to talk to you about this. So for those that don't necessarily know this about Mark, uh, I don't know if you talk about this a whole lot, but you're you're big Pez guy. H- yeah. Have you watched the Pez documentary on Netflix? Because the first time I saw that, I didn't know anything about it, but you were the very first person that I, uh, that I thought of because of your, your love for Pez. Have you seen that documentary? Because I guess I guess it's like these people that go out and get these these pez that that are actually illegal because you're not allowed to have them, and it's the story of this. I just immediately thought of you. Not that you're doing that. Well, thank you for thinking of me. Yes, I'm a big pez guy. I got quite a collection, and uh, and Ben Bagley, 
uh, th- told me about it. So I did watch it. The Pez Outlaw. It's pretty. <laughs> it's pretty funny. So is it worth? I have not seen it. Is it worth a watch? Oh yeah, you'd like it. Okay. You'd like it. It, it. I mean, it's not so much anymore. But back in kind of the Cold War era, you, you, Europe would make a different kind of Pez than America, and you couldn't get them here. So this guy would go over to Europe and get all these Pez and bring them back. And it, it, it's a it's a fun little story. All right. All right, there you go. A little fun fact about Mark. He uh, really loves the Pez. Uh, by the way, if your anybody prize- has any really <laughs> rare, expensive Pez laying in their garage, just send them my way. Do you have a prized Pez dispenser, by the way? Do you have one that's above all others? <laughs> well, I mean, I my wife won't let me spend very much on them, but I've you know I've got some older ones from my early collections, an old Batman that's probably worth maybe fifty dollars, but that's about as high as I that's a, that's a, as much <laughs> as I can afford on these things. Mark, great stuff, man. It's always a pleasure and uh, fun to talk to you. Thanks for the insight. We'll hear you with Greg coming up in a few minutes. Thanks, man. All right, my brother. Thanks. See you. There we go. The great Mark Durant. Go to BigOtires.com and make an appointment at one of 50 locally owned and operated Utah locations. Big O Tires, the team you trust. We'll take a time out. We'll come back. We'll update you on some earlier action from some BYU teams. BYU women's uh, basketball was on the road. We'll let you know what happened in San Diego. And BYU men's volleyball, another match against Ball State. We'll update you on that, plus some college hoops when we return on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's get you back to Cougar Pregame Live. Here's Jason Shepard. Cougar Pregame Live is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. The Cougars hosting the Pacific Tigers will have the tip-off for you from the Marriott Center coming your way in about 35 minutes. You'll hear Greg Rubel and Mark Durant on the call. Earlier today, BYU women's basketball on the road at San Diego. Cougars fall to the Toreros by three, 52-49 the final score. BYU really struggled in that third quarter. In fact, they uh, they outscored, well, they didn't outscore it in the second, but they led by one at half. They outscored the Toreros in the fourth quarter, uh, 24-18. Unfortunately, in that third quarter, they got outscored by 10, only able to muster four points total in that third quarter, and the Cougars fall to the Toreros. Uh, the news not so good uh, for BYU men's volleyball as well. They lose 3-1 to one at number 8 Ball State. Good news is BYU took the first match on Thursday night, so they got the split over number 8 Ball State. All right, other local action going on right now. Utah State uh, on the road at Fort Collins, so just on the other side of the Rockies. Colorado State with a one-point lead at 18-17 with 11 minutes to go in the first half. Weber State at Idaho State. They are all tied up at 12 apiece with nine and a half minutes to go later on tonight. Southern Utah at Utah Tech. And the big game in the West Coast Conference, as I mentioned tonight, among others, though, is number 18 St. Mary's hosting number 12 Gonzaga. That will be one to pay attention to for sure. There is a conference game underway right now. It is Portland leading at Pepperdine 25-13 in the first half. All right, coming up next, we'll get you back over to the Marriott Center, the Cougar Pregame Coaches Show with Greg Rubel coming your way next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's time to get the inside scoop on today's game. This is the Cougar Pregame Coaches Show, brought to you by Zions Bank. For the support you need to power forward, Zions Bank is for you. Now let's head back to the Built Bar courtside seats and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening, Cougar basketball fans. Welcome back courtside inside the Marriott Center on the Brigham Young University campus in Provo, Utah, as tonight's The Cougars conclude their three-game WCC homestand with the Pacific Tigers in town. The Cougars looking for the season sweep of Pacific after a comfortable win in Stockton that tipped off the Cougs' conference campaign back in late December. I'm your play-by-play presenter, Greg Rubel. With me is my longtime broadcast partner, the former BYU Ironman, Mark Durant. And Mark, uh, BYU may not contend for a conference championship in its final WCC season, but... After St. Mary's and Gonzaga, the league is is so muddled in the middle that a top four finish is still well within BYU's reach. And the top four finish would mean a double bye in Vegas. And a top four finish in this league puts you in the NIT periphery. Uh, there's still a lot 
on the line for BYU here in this stretch run. All you can do, Greg, is take advantage of the opportunities that lay ahead of you. I mean, the pass is, has happened, and now you have an opportunity tonight to play Pacific, who's a good, strong team and has had some good wins, and, and you want to build on that uh, confidence you have from the other night against LMU, and then you have the opportunity to, to go on the road and, and play good basketball and maybe you'll go up to Gonzaga, see what happens. You want to play well, and then you have an opportunity to finish the rest of the conference strong and be in that top four where you get a, a double buy in a tournament where, you know, you may actually have a chance if you're playing good basketball. And then you get to the tournament, you have an opportunity to win one game or maybe two games or maybe three games. And all you, well, you just have to concentrate on taking advantage of every opportunity that you have. And all those other things will take care of themselves. But I really like the way BYU played the other night. I think they're playing with a lot of confidence. They're playing great defense, playing rebounding. And if you can throw in a little offense like we saw yep. the other night, look out for this team. I mean, wow, that was impressive. My pregame conversation with BYU head coach Mark Pope is coming up next as the Zions Bank Cougar pregame coach to show continues live from the Marriott Center on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is the Cougar Pregame Coaches Show. For more with head coach Mark Pope, let's rejoin Greg Rubel. BYU and Pacific coming up just after the top of the hour. BYU coming in off a runaway home win over LMU on Thursday. Very impressive victory. Tigers, meantime, were home court winners over Pepperdine on Thursday. And the Waves struggle mightily. They're winless in league. They're within four of Portland in the game being played in Malibu right now. And BYU's in Malibu next Thursday. But that's then. Tonight is tonight. And Pacific, well, they've won back-to-back games and sit a half game ahead of BYU in the WCC standings. Pacific solo fourth, BYU solo fifth. Those positions would flip with a BYU win tonight. Time now for my pregame conversation with BYU head coach Mark Pope, presented by Zions Bank. For the support you need to power forward, Zions Bank is for you. And Coach Pope tonight talks about facing a Pacific team, playing some really good basketball, and scoring a ton of points. BYU's defense will be facing a stern test tonight. Yeah, they're they're scoring at an elite level in conference, especially there. There's only been two teams in the whole conference that held them under 80 points, right. which is which is pretty extraordinary. Um, and they're you know they settled in on a smaller lineup um, that is uh, they're they're two most potent scorers. The guys taking the most shots on the team are their starting five and their starting four, which is a unique mix. A lot of times you have uh, fours and fives that can spread the floor, but they're not the the focus of the offense. That's not the case in this in the, in Pacific play, place. And, they, and they're playing great basketball. They've been the surprise of the league this year, and and uh, they're a, they're a really tough matchup. They do look a little different, like you noted, since they were looking when you helped them to forty nine at their place. Yeah, they're they're just playing smaller. I mean, they've committed to Boone at the five right mm-hmm. now, and and uh, thirty three Martindale is playing at an elite level right now. Um, really, really aggressive. He's the one piece that's so much different than when we played them, as well as the lineup. And so, um, you know, like, like I said, they've um, they've been really, really causing people issues on the defense side, and and they're going to be real challenges for us in this game. Two of the best shooting wings in the league and the game, really, with Spencer Johnson and Luke Abdolovich. Yeah, uh, going head to head, and um, it's a terrific matchup. This Abdolovich has has been making shots in this league at an elite level since he first got here, and and uh, he's a, a veteran, veteran player that's playing a, at a great level for them right now, and a real steadying force for their team. What does Pacific maybe sacrifice with their style of play right now that maybe you can take advantage of? I think rebounding first and foremost. Yeah, yeah we have to have a presence on the glass. That's just wildly important for us. We've got to have a, a presence on. The glass and um, you know we, we also have to find some way to have impact um, inside at the lane and, and uh, for them um, you know they, they'll they will um, not just front the post really really work hard to deny the post but they'll bring in uh, you know help they'll be really really zoned up around the paint um, so it, we're, it's going to take our discipline it's not going to be a frontal assault in terms of just trying to get post catches because it just doesn't work nobody's been able to get a lot of post catches against them um, you know Boone and, and Martindale and, and their guys off the bench work so hard to kind of dance in the post. And so um, we're going to have to take take advantage of our size in a little bit different ways on the offensive glass, mm-hmm. in transition off the offensive glass, getting downhill to two feet, really attacking the, the white uh, with baseline drives and coming to two feet, um, and, and then actually making a second and third pass out of the play. Will you start the same way tonight as Thursday? And what did you like out of that starting group against LMU? I thought the guys, um, I thought the guys' focus was pretty good. You know, I love the fact that Noah's diving on the floor in the very first possession, and he continued to do that throughout the game. Um, um, and and I thought our, our 
communication is getting better every game, and it's going to be really stressed in this game um, because Pacific plays so much in transition. But I like what those guys did in those areas. You're a top 25 defensive efficiency team, but when games get up and down, you can play that game too. You've scored big numbers lately too. Yeah, uh, I I think we've been pleased with our decision-making in transition. Um, That's been a place we've really, really struggled all season. But but as of late, we've been making simpler plays. The guys have been making making the simple, quick play, which is so much more lethal than trying to make home run plays. And so, you know, if we can stay there, we'll continue to be successful. Coach, thank you for the preview. We'll talk to you post-game. Good luck. Thanks, Ray. That is Mark Pope leading us into tonight's Keys to the Game, brought to you, as always, by your local Ford stores. BYU basketball is built Ford Proud. Mark Durant, what are your keys for BYU against the Tigers of Pacific? Well, I'd like to see more of the same from the other night with the turnovers. Keep that number down. Probably won't have seven, but keep it around you know, 10 to ten to 15, somewhere in there. Had 21 against Pacific at Pacific. And yeah. Remarkable, they won by 20 points yeah. with 21 turnovers. Uh, the other thing I think uh, you want to keep Pacific to under 35% three-point shooting. Really have to get out and defend the three. That's what they live and die with, and they're excellent shooters. So if you can keep them under that number on the road, they're going to have a tough time winning. Pacific 10th nationally in three-point field goal percentage and 33rd nationally in three-pointers per game. They shoot at just under 40% from the arc on the year, and Luke Abdolovich oh. gets into those stretches. <laughs> it's pretty lethal. Break time, and this reminder now to go to BigOtires.com and make an appointment at one of 50 locally owned and operated Utah locations. Big O Tires, the team you trust. The BYU Store, Cougar Tip-Off Show, next. Live from the Marriott Center on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's almost time to hit the hardwood. This is the Cougar Tip-Off Show, brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Also brought to you by the BYU Creamery, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. Also by Siegfried and Jensen. Siegfried and Jensen has been helping Utah families for over 30 years. Now let's head live to the Built Bar courtside seats and join Mark Durant alongside the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Cougar Nation, we are coming to you live from courtside of the Marriott Center. Tonight, the 15 and 10 BYU Cougars hosting the 12 and 12 Pacific Tigers. BYU 5 and 5 in conference play. Tigers 5 and 4. Cougs tonight capping off a three-game homestand. BYU has won the last five Marriott Center meetings with Pacific and eight of the last nine get-togethers overall. This is the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show brought to you by the BYU Store official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Greg Grubel and Mark Durant with you for play-by-play and commentary. Our studio host is Jason Shepard. Our coordinating producer, Terry South, control board operators, Corbin Radford and James Finlayson. Our BYU radio engineer is Barry Squires. Broadcast interns are Caleb Hatch and Shiloh Johnson. You are listening to us on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Our satellite radio flagship is BYU Radio, Sirius XM 143. And our over-the-air flagship is KSL News Radio 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. You're also on the BYU Radio app and at byuradio.org. Well, BYU is coming in off an 89-point outing versus LMU on Thursday, but it was another stellar defensive effort as well, and defense has been where the Cougars have been hanging their hat all season. They're one of the top rebounding teams in all of college basketball. They're top 25 in Ken Palm defensive efficiency. Mark, the Cougs have held opponents under 70 in more than half of their games this season. It's really fun to watch for me, and I, I was a defensive guy, so it's been about 20 years, I think, since Bowie's had the kind of defensive numbers they have this year, and so it's it's fun to watch. A lot of people think, hey, just go out and guard your guy, and that's, that's defense, but there's a lot going on on the defensive end, Greg. There's you know, when do you help? How much do you help? When you switch, you know, when, when's the rotation come from the back uh, backside? And there's a lot of strategy that goes in the scout on how you play defense. And it takes, uh, it sometimes takes a little while, I think, for teams to really understand how, how a coach wants to play defense. I think these guys are getting it. Uh, and, and a lot of the mistakes they're making early in the year, they're not making. They've become really a, a, a powerhouse defensively and won a lot of games because of their defense. And like I said before, you get a couple threes going in and you combine it with that defense, it's it's really a challenge for, for opponents. But I like, 
you know, guys are play playing their man better, making better decisions, and they're understanding uh, how to help their teammates. And uh, I think uh, this team, this defensive team, is, is one of the best I've seen here at BYU. He is Mark Durant coming up after the break. We'll hear from Pacific assistant coach Jason Levy when the BYU Store Cougar tip-off show continues live from the Marriott Center in Provo on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is the Cougar Tip-Off Show. Let's head back courtside to rejoin Greg Rubel. This is the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show for BYU and Pacific. Coming up, final regular season WCC meeting between these two programs. BYU has won 17 of 24 all-time get-togethers, including 14 of 18 conference games. The Cougs are 8-2. All time against Pacific here at the Marriott Center, including a 7 and 1 mark in WCC contest. Pacific coming in two tonight, 12 and 12, 5 and 4 in league, and the Tigers lighting it up of late. Pacific has topped 80 points in six of its last seven games. A stark contrast from just five weeks ago when BYU held the Tigers to a season low 49 points in Stockton. And a short time ago, I spoke with Pacific assistant coach Jason Levy. Just about just how uh, far the Cougar or the Tigers offense has come since that night at the Spano Center. Yeah, we've been moving the ball. You know, we our guard play has been good. Maurice Odom, who, who's a freshman, is really runs the team well. Tyler Beard is also running the team well. We're moving the ball. We're kind of finding an identity, both offensively and defensively. For the most part, we're guarding the three pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the way we're playing, but we got to continue to improve and strive. And our guys are starting to believe that we have a chance to win, which is great. And you're making a good number of threes, too. Yes, we are, because we're moving the ball, and our point guards are playing like point guards. They they, they know they're in there to move the ball, get these guys in, involved, guys like Lou, Keelan. So it's a good group to coach. And Mo Odom was just getting into that starting point guard role when we saw you guys in late December. Yeah, you know, he's a kid who's originally from New York City. He's got a really good feel for the game. He pushes in transition. He could score the ball, but what he does is he's a, he's a really dynamic passer. And, and I think Coach Perry said this before. He's a great listener. You could run, you could be in practice and give him five things to run, and he does it like, like a coach. Boom, boom, boom. Mm. And he makes the game easier for our players. Hopefully that will continue. We were talking off the air. Uh, in league, he's averaging almost five assists per game in, in less than 20 minutes per game. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive. The thing that most freshmen don't understand is it takes time to develop. And to his credit, he's he's learned, you know, he was not playing much at all. And then he kind of got a chance to play, and he, and he understood what coach needed him. And what we needed him to do was get these guys the ball and run our team, which he's done a phenomenal job, I think, as a freshman. Even if he was a senior, I'd be saying the same thing. Keelan Boone was just starting to get into a starting groove when we saw you guys last in December. He had 19 against BYU, and he's your leading scorer right now. Yeah, you know, he scores in a variety of ways. He can pick and pop. He can handle the ball. He's what I call a mismatch problem because he can shoot it. He can take you off the bounce. And not only that, he's, he's a joy to coach. I mean, he's a great guy to be around, great attitude, and, and he's been really good. You know, he's made some big big shots for us. What kind of matchup is it then with uh, Fuseni Traore inside for BYU tonight? I think I've told you this many times. I love Traore. Uh, he's a, I call him a bull in a china shop. He knows how to <laughs> score. He's aggressive. Uh, he competes. So we're going to have our hands full. I thought we did a good job on him last time we played you. The thing was the other guys really hurt us. So, But I think he's a guy that, you know, we have to really – limit his post catches which is obviously easier said than done but I, I i'm a big fan okay. beyond limiting foos's post catches what will be a couple of other maybe scouting report uh, points that you guys want to really focus in on tonight you know i think i told you this last time byu doesn't change they're a really good fast break team and they're a very good rebounding team no matter who no matter what year we're in they their teams always rebound and they always push in transition so i think transition and also, rebounding is going to be key no matter any time we play BYU. And I probably I probably hear you, you hear that all the time from other teams as well, I would well, think. Finally, last foreseeable visit to the Marriott Center. Your thoughts on being in this building one more time? Great place, great people. Uh, it's an exciting atmosphere. I would say anybody who hasn't been here needs to come at least one time. Uh, people are great. You're a first-class person. Uh, just a very, very exciting atmosphere. I, you know, I was telling Maurice Odom, you know, you don't see this in many spots. So it's, it's, 
you know, we're, we're sad to see you guys go, but I think you guys are going to have very good success in the Big 12. Coach Levy, it's always been a pleasure. Thank you for the time again, and we'll look forward to seeing you in Las Vegas. Anytime. Thank you. That is Pacific Assistant Coach Jason Levy. More of the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show coming up after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Welcome back to the Cougar Tip-Off Show. Let's rejoin Craig Rubel. BYU and Pacific straight ahead on a full slate day in the WCC. One game already underway. They're at halftime in Malibu. Pepperdine 36, Portland 35. A rare halftime lead for the Waves who host BYU next Thursday. Coming up later, Santa Clara 4-5 and five in league at USF. 4-6 and six in league. LMU plays at San Diego. The Lions 6-4, and four, San Diego 3-7. and seven. Then the marquee matchup of the WCC season so far, 9-0 and St. Mary's home to 8-1 and one Gonzaga. Tonight they meet for the first time this season. Tonight, as of tonight, only two games separate third place from eighth place in the WCC. The only thing we think we know is that St. Mary's and Gonzaga will be the top two seeds in Vegas and that Pepperdine will be the 10. But, Mark, I think it's fair to say that the league is as good as competitive in the top and middle tiers as it has ever been. BYU came within seconds of beating both the St. Mary's and Gonzaga, and BYU just drilled the team that beat Gonzaga in Spokane. And a lot of teams have given Gonzaga a scare. St. Mary's obviously really good this year. It's not a Gonzaga walk away like we're used to, and, and even that middle middle of the t- middle tier, I mean, who knows gonna, who's going to win from night to night. This is a great chance for Pacific, and BYU's got to continue to build on what they're doing. So it's a big game tonight uh, in, in here, as well as a big one up in uh, Moraga, I guess. Yes, it is kind of big. Uh, final thoughts before tip-off coming up next. This is the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. The Cougar Tip-Off Show rolls on. Let's head back live courtside. All right, tip-off just moments away. Quick word about uh, Spencer Johnson. He's really been playing tremendous basketball, both ends of the floor, but the offensive numbers get the most attention. And what a matchup we have tonight between Spencer Johnson, who on the year is shooting 52% from the field, 50% from the arc against Luke Abdolovich from Pacific, 53% from the field, 56% from the arc. These two guys can get it going from deep. Abdolovich is really a special shooter, and uh, Spencer has proven himself to be that level of shooter this year. And I think he needs to look to be more aggressive from the three. He got late in the shot clock the other night, Greg, and he lost the three contested. He nailed it. I mean, he has the capability to do that. So maybe even be more aggressive and shoot more threes when you have those kind of numbers. Tip off of BYU and Pacific is coming up next. This has been the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.